chemists study matter, and under normal circumstances, we consider matter anything that occupies space, takes up volume, and also has mass. So I have a sample of matter here, and this is um, pretty pure water. And we might not think about water every day, but in fact, this is perhaps one of the most important compounds on this planet, and our planet wouldn't function the way it does without this compound, and obviously our bodies, which are large percentages of water, wouldn't either. So this is a very intensively studied substance, but we can use it as an example of, wait, wait a minute, how do chemists think? Um, do they observe only the macroscopic properties of a substance like this? Um, the macroscopic properties would include the clarity of the material. Um, water doesn't absorb much visible light at all. Um, doesn't smell, um, doesn't taste like much of anything. Pure water doesn't. And that makes sense when you think about the way our bodies and our senses are adapted. If we were highly sensitive either through smell or taste to water, you can imagine you know, our, our brains would be overloaded with the taste and smell of water. So these are the direct observations using my senses that I can um, make on this material. And one of the remarkable properties of water, and in fact any liquid, is that for example, I can stick my finger in the water, and my finger easily displaces the water. So if you begin wondering, well, how, how is that? How could that be? Why does water behave the way it does? And we do a thought experiment now. If we imagine magnifying the contents of this beaker and zooming in as if we had a microscope, an even more powerful microscope than exists currently, and if we magnify the contents of the beaker up to about a thousandfold, we would see things like dust particles and some other impurities in the water. We might see some bacterial cells that are floating around in the water, but we still wouldn't see the water itself. So if we continued on our sort of journey magnifying the contents of the beaker, and we went down another 10,000 times or magnified another 10,000 times past those bacterial cells, we would begin to see something very interesting. And we would see particles like this, and we would be able to, or have the capacity to observe their behaviors, and on that particulate level, we might be able to make sense of the behavior of water that we observe on the macroscopic level. So if you'll notice the objects, these particles that we'll say represent particles of water, they have some really unusual abilities. They're colliding with one another. They're bouncing all over the place. They're bouncing off themselves. They're bouncing off the walls of this container. And I can move my hand through them either way. And this is basically an image of the type of thing that happens when you swim in water. So the liquid properties, that idea that we can displace these particles, is explainable if we could see down on the particulate level. We have different techniques that we use to observe at that level, and that's a lot of what chemistry is about. So if we went beyond this level of magnification, and we went, say, a billion times more magnified than we see here at a one-to-one -one ratio, the macroscopic ratio, we might be able to see water particles, molecules. And this is a, a model of a water molecule. Some of the features of this model are, in fact, reflective of the true properties of the molecule, and other features are not particularly ref reflective of the actual molecule. But if we observe this particle, it's actually made of three different particles. These white spheres represent hydrogen atoms. This red sphere represents an oxygen atom. And the formula, the chemical formula of water is H2O. And this subscript represents two hydrogen atoms that are bonded to one another, excuse me, bonded to the central oxygen atom in the molecule. So we have oxygen and we have hydrogen. And I'm going to grab another marker. And these are elements. And water itself, a particle, is composed of these atoms of these two elements. When we magnify down to the particulate level in chemistry, we hit the molecular level. This is a molecule. 
and a molecule is a chemical combination of atoms. These spheres again represent the atoms. Chemical combination, we'll learn more about what chemical bonding is, but the atoms are the units that bond either to one another or to other types of atoms to form molecules. We can zoom in even further and look at the structure of an atom. And these are also made of particles. Atoms are composed of three different types of particles, protons, neutrons, 